dignity, and that's why historically it's been under constant attack. During the enslavement of African people, their hair was often shaved off to separate them from any former identity. But ironically, based on oral accounts, some enslaved Africans still managed to devise a brilliant plan of resistance that involved their hair. <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like to show your support, you may do so by clicking the link in the description box below. African hairstyles have been used to express beauty standards, spiritual devotion, social status, and interestingly enough, during enslavement, our hair has even been made into messages to guide us on our journey to freedom. When we really think about it, this oral history should not be a surprise to us at all because of the numerous ways we style our hair. Cornrows seems to have been a universal African trait and during slavery, apparently, Africans from South America found creative ways to not only resist slavery, but escape it. Now, there are some who are skeptical of this history in particular, as many are hesitant to rely on oral accounts for this information. In fairness, it would make sense that this knowledge would only survive amongst enslaved people orally, especially because it had to remain a secret amongst enslaved Africans for so long. Even for Africans who did escape with the aid of communication through hair, it's unlikely that they would speak much about it after freedom, likely to ensure its continued use amongst other Africans. We're still discovering things today about how Africans resisted, so it's best we remain open. Regardless, the social significance of African hair and how it sends messages has been proven through the records of African civilization. Since ancient times, African hairstyles have revealed a person's age, birthplace, clan membership, socioeconomic status, marital status, and occupation. The most elaborate hairstyles were sported by community leaders and the ruler who was the only one permitted to wear a headdress. Beautiful crowns were fashioned out of leather, gold, beads, and fancy braids. Priests were also recognized by hairstyles that set them apart from other community members. Before marriage, Igbo girls in present-day Nigeria used clay, ground coil, and palm oil to shape their hair into a horn shape that bends toward their brows. While married women have plainer, covered styles, girls in Senegal wear braids and whimsical styles. In Kenya, young Turkana men spend hours getting their hair styled elaborately to show they had completed the initiation rites for adulthood. In some ancient societies, African men wore their hair in a distinctive style when they were about to go to war. This signaled their families to prepare for a possible death. So the use of creative styling with African hair has a very long tradition, and being the adaptable, intelligent people they were, Africans in South America once again drew from that ancient knowledge, supposedly creating roadmaps or signals to freedom through elaborate cornrow patterns. There's some speculation that an enslaved African named Benkos, who formed a maroon community of former enslaved people, used cornrows as a way to relay messages and identify landmarks for freedom. This hasn't been confirmed by mainstream scholars, but it does seem plausible given the extensive history of African hair communication. One local oral historian and hair braider in Colombia named Ziomara Asprilla Garcia explained the history of how hair braiding was used to relay messages. In the time of slavery in Colombia, hair braiding was used to relay messages. For example, to signal that they wanted to escape, women would braid a hairstyle called departes. It had thick, tight braids braided closely to the scalp and was tied into buns on the top. And another style had curved braids tightly braided on their heads. The curved braids would represent the roads they would use to escape. In the braids, they also kept gold and hid seeds, which in the long run helped them survive after they escaped. This oral history is extraordinarily valuable to the African diaspora because it affirms the African tradition of sending messages through hair. The spiritual aspect of African hair remains the center of it all. These enslaved Africans no doubt never forgot the significance of it and so using the hair to communicate in their darkest hour certainly had a spiritual component to it. Because for some African cultures, communication from the gods and spirits was thought to pass through the hair. 
and I can only imagine that there's nothing more spiritually healing or divine than receiving a message through the here leading you to freedom. It's one of the most effective ways to use your culture and your crown to liberate yourself from tyranny. Hopefully one day there will be more information on this topic to make it more mainstream within our community because it may help us to appreciate our hair more and take pride in where we come from. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in this continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. <laughs>
was published in 1510 by Garcia Rodriguez de Mandavo. He wrote it after his tremendously popular Amadis of Gaul. Montavo gives us details about the queen. Know that on the right hand of the Indies exists an island called California, very close to a side of the earthly paradise, and it was populated by black women, without any man existing there because they lived in the way of the Amazons. They had beautiful and robust bodies and were brave and very strong. Their island was the strongest of the world, with its steep cliffs and rocky shores. Their weapons were golden, and so were the harnesses of the wild beasts that they were accustomed to taming so that they could be ridden, because there was no other metal in the island than gold. In his book, Montavo tells us that Queen Calafia helped the Muslims when Constantinople was being attacked. She raised an army with a large fleet of black women riding on griffins. In the novel, Queen Calafia is captured by the Christians and converts to Christianity. She then goes on to marry a cousin of Esplandian and returns with her army to California. Now the thing that brings the legend of Queen Calafia into reality is her influence on the name of California itself. A Spanish conquistador named Hernán Cortés explored the northwestern part of Mexico in 1536 and discovered the California Peninsula. Apparently, Cortés was a fan of romance novels and got his hands on Montavo's book about Queen Calafia. In his novel, Montavo mentions that one of the precious stones on the Queen's island were pearls and legend has it that Cortés found pearls during his expedition. Believing that he had discovered Calafia's island, he named it California in her honor. Now an expedition Cortés ordered just three years later proved that the so-called island was actually a peninsula but the name California remained. Now, even though it's mostly a legend, many people agree that the state of California was indeed named after the Queen Calafia legend. But there are some who still subscribe to the term Calita Fornax or Hot Furnace as the origin of the name California. Regardless, her importance as a symbol for the spirit of California is undeniable. Queen Calafia continues to be depicted as the spirit of California in modern day sculpture, paintings, stories, and films. There's even a remarkable panel of the Black Queen with her Amazons at the Mark Hopkins Intercontinental Hotel in San Francisco. There is absolutely no denying her influence. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and would like to help out in its continued production, please consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. <laughs>
With that being said, seeing how I haven't had a call yet, I will take it upon myself.